Let's move on to cladribine. So cladribine is an older drug that's a new drug. Um, and, and so Wallace, why don't you take us through cladribine? So cladribine, as you say, is a medicine that's been around for a little while um, and a previous formulation has been used in the treatment of hairy cell leukemia. It was studied in MS over a decade ago in two large phase three trials. Uh, the um, Clarity study, which was patients who had relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis, and also in um, the Oracle study, which um, took patients with CIS, although many of them would be classified as MS with the updated diagnostic criteria that we've discussed. Now, cladribine is a prodrug, uh, and when it comes into the body, it's phosphorylated to uh, the active metabolite. Um, and it, the level of um, uh, phosphorylation that occurs depends on the tissue type. So it's uh, primarily taken up by lymphocytes uh, where, where the ph phosphorylation occurs and lymphocyte depletion occurs, possibly followed by um, a, an, an immune reconstitution effect. So the, the immune system may be different after a course of cladribine. I think of the currently available MS therapies as probably the most convenient and that it's given uh, as short courses of treatment with up to 20 days of oral treatment over two years. So generally um, five days in months, one, two, 13 and 14. And with uh, those 20 days of treatment, uh, what we what was seen in the clarity study was that patients can remain free of relapses and new MRI activity in the absence of ongoing therapy. Okay, and how's the experience been using it? We found this a, a very um, straightforward medication to use. So, firstly, the the medicine seems to be extremely well tolerated by patients. The the main concern is lymphopenia. So, in the clarity study. The, the, the rates of grade four lymphopenia, this is a lymphocyte count below 200, were around 0.7%, so quite a, a, a rare event. Uh, and patients generally tolerate the courses of treatment extremely well. Occasionally, patients will report problems with headache or tiredness or sore throat during the treatment, but, but generally it tends to produce very little in the way of side effects. The other very attractive quality is the um, the monitoring burden associated with it is, is very low. So compared with a no number of other uh, oral agents and monoclonal antibodies, there's very little monitoring required, just a couple of follow-up blood tests over the first six months of treatment, and then you need to ensure that the lymphocyte count is above 800 to proceed with treatment in the second year. Sven? Yeah, I, I have to say um, when, when the drug was approved, there was some uncertainty in, in Germany because, first of all, the study was so long ago and cladribine was tested as a platform or as a first-line therapy. So I think in the CLARITY trial, over 70% of patients included were treatment naive. And when it came to the market, it was all of a sudden approved for highly active patients. And so we all recognized the convenience of, the, of, the, of cladribine. However, we were a little bit, yeah, it was difficult to get an idea about the real potential when it comes to efficacy. And now using it for more than two years, I, I can support Wallace's opinion that it's very well tolerated. And I have to say the majority of patients is quite stable on this uh, therapy. And for me as an immunologist, it's, it's also very intriguing to, to have this concept of a pulse therapy so that you treat in year one and two and you have this um, treatment-free interval while the patients remain stable in year three and four. I think this is a bit of a different history uh, compared to the UK, where this concept of pulse therapies was already introduced with alemtuzumab, and, and alemtuzumab was, was largely used in the UK, while in Germany, it was also always a kind of a discussion if you want to have a continuous treatment because you can interrupt this treatment and you can get rid of the treatment effects compared to a pulse therapy, which is convenient. However, it's not so easy to stop therapy while you are on your way. And, and this is why I think cladribine is not so, um, it, it was not introduced or it did not explode 
in, into the market. But now I think numbers of patients are constantly increasing because um, the combination of efficacy and convenience for the patients um, is, is quite good. So, so you bring up an interesting point about this drug, which is uh, different than I think any other. And that was in the extension study, after two years on therapy, uh, the patients untreated did as well as those who went on to another course, suggesting a very long acting effect over time. Um, and so how do you figure out when to redose after the first two years? And this is the discussion we have right now because so far it's only approved for two courses and, and this is also comparable, comparable to the situation when alemtuzumab entered the market. There we all were kind of surprised, what do we do after two courses? So if, if there is still relapse activity, are we then allowed to go for a third course or do we necessarily have to switch um, um, therapy to, to a new drug? However, so actually the, the patients, the, the patients we have for longest time on clatterbin are now entering year three. So we can still discuss this question for one and a half year in addition, but, but then we have to come up with an, uh, with an idea how to continue. And, and my personal note on this is that if the patient is really stable in year one and two and remains stable in year three and four, this is a full responder in my opinion. And in these cases, I would recommend to continue clatribin because obviously the mechanism of action is working in this particular patient. However, if we have a situation that the patient is maybe stable in year one and two, but starts relapsing already in year three, this might be an indication that this mechanism of action in this given patient is, is not working very well. And then we think we should maybe change to, to a monoclonal antibody. But right now there is no data available and, and I think there are only opinions which we can discuss. So I think that's right, Sven, and there's a lot of uncertainty about what to do beyond year four. I must say with our initial clinical experience um, in the UK, and I'd be interested to hear uh, your experience from Germany, actually we found this a very effective medication. So when we looked at the first 100 patients that we uh, treated at Queen Square, we found that actually the, the overwhelming number uh, were uh, over 85% were relapse-free in the, 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 f the first year of treatment. And I, I think our initial clinical Im impression uh, supports the finding that the subgroup findings from the Clarity study, this seems to be quite an effective medication, particularly in patients with high levels of disease activity.